by SportsMedUtah.com. And hi there, everybody. Welcome to Game Night Live, presented by SportsMed Utah. Rod and Jeremiah here. Week 7, JJ, of the yes. high school football season, now in the history books. Yeah, we had a number of games with playoff implications this week. And you know what, Rod? You know what I'm in the mood for? What's that? How about some overtime drama? Can you help me out? You know what? I think I just have that information sure. for you. One of those games with the region title and playoff spot on the line, American Fork at Harriman. Winner takes full possession of Region 4, and both coaches admitted that this game would probably decide the region title. Our Game Night Live crew was there as we had this game live on KSL.com. And the fireworks, Jeremiah, they were set off early. Sweet. Game of the Week, brought to you by Hut 8. Welcome to Harriman High School tonight. We've got a great Region 4 battle. First place in Region on the line between the Cavemen and the Mustangs. Still on his feet, and he may go all the way. Greg Rush with the opening kickoff for a touchdown. Fake to Honey. Tanner Smith going to the end zone. It's caught. Caught. Touchdown, American Fork. Zach Katoa. And with 8.27 left, American Fork has tied this up. That brings up third down and 10 at the 41. Keener, here comes a pressure. He's got a receiver. Caught! Cody Jarvis, touchdown! 25 seconds left, first half. Caveman trailing the Mustangs, 14-7, trying to get the equalizer here. The pitch to Katoa. The handoff, the pass. It's a reverse pass, and it's a touchdown to the quarterback. Tanner Smith at the end of the first half, and what a first half it's been. We are tied. Harriman 14, American Fort 14. First and goal at the six yard line. Honey and Katoa behind Smith. Katoa, the jump pass, it's a touchdown. What a play by the caveman. Zach Katoa, the jump pass to Nate Heaps. A jump pass? Yes, sir. <laughs> You know, uh, we worked on it. We never really called it in the game. That's the first time and they called it, and it worked. Clock running, 45 seconds. Second down and goal. One yard line. Ball game on the line right here. Keener's going to throw to the end zone. Touchdown! Touchdown, Harriman! Josh McMillan! And we are headed to overtime, tied at 21. Fourth down and two in overtime. Here comes the pressure, ball on the ground. Braden Keener hucks it to the end zone, nobody there. So the American Fort Caveman defense, they hold on the first possession of overtime, and now the Caveman, all they need is a field goal. Jackson Nadal, the senior, 30-yard field goal attempt to win it for American Fort. The hold is good, the kick is up, and the kick is good! American Fort wins it! American Fort wins it 24-21! 30-yard field goal by Jackson Nadov and the Cape Man take over first place in Region 4. She doesn't miss. Dude, what were the nerves like on a 30-yard field goal to take over first place in Region 4? Uh, I was going to puke, to be honest. <laughs> but, uh, I'm just really happy that I could get that for those guys. I've been practicing really hard in practice, and it paid off, and I'm glad. Jackson, I'm glad you held it in. Elsewhere in Region 4, Lone Peak at Pleasant Grove, both trying to keep pace for a playoff spot. Pleasant Grove jumping out early. Christian Miller finds Coleman Edwards, 20-yard touchdown. Vikings had a 14-0 lead, but right before the half, Lone Peak starting to come back. Maxson McKez Jackson McKenzie uh, breaking a couple of tackles, and he'll take it 38 yards. Lone Peak cuts the lead in half. All right, this one also goes to overtime. Jeremiah, you're getting your wish. Yes, Pleasant thank you Grove very much. striking first, Malik Overstreet. Nine yards, touchdown. Pleasant Grove leads 21-14. Lone Peak's turn now. Parker Richards, three yards, touchdown. We're tied at 21. Jeremiah, double duty. Overtime thank you. rules, they go get the ball right back. Kicker Sam Kramer nails it. 27-yarder to put Lone Peak up 24-21. Last chance for Pleasant Grove. Here it comes. Picked off by Chandler Gokertz. A lone peak now one and three in region four. PG dropping to three or to one and two in region play. How about I return the favor with an upset? All right, let's uh, have it. Let's do that. Defending three AA champion Desert Hills was six and zero after winning a number one versus number two matchup with Pineview last week. But there's never a week off in region nine. A tough road test 
at Dixie. Let's go to the first quarter. Nick Wormsley, the Desert Hills quarterback with a shovel pass to Cody Ricketts. Makes a few flyers miss, and he's got an 11-yard touchdown. The Thunder up 7-3, but right before the half, Ammon Takao, the quarterback keeper. Dixie up 10-7 after two. Thunder on upset alert. Let's go to the fourth quarter now. Takao feeling the pressure. The Thunder defense sacks him in the end zone. The ball pops loose. That's a safety. Desert Hills will score a touchdown on the next drive and led 16-10 late in the fourth. Back comes Dixie. Takao, another keeper. And Dixie's up 17-16. Desert Hills still has some time. They're driving down the field. Warmsley trying to make something happen. The ball is tipped. R.J. Wilger, right place, right time. That seals the deal for Dixie. They get the upset. A one-point win over Desert Hills. More Region 9 action. Hurricane at Snow Canyon. Jeremiah Iremia gives the Tigers a 14-point lead with a five-yard run. Third quarter, Snow Canyon trying to keep pace. They cut the lead to eight when Robert Taimi wins this jump ball for a 10-yard touchdown. But just too much Aramia. He just committed to BYU this week, and that's why. One of many reasons why. That's a 12-yard touchdown run. Hurricane now all alone in first place in Region 9. It's true. They face Pineview on Thursday. All right, moving back north, the battle for the boot in Twilla County. Twilla and Stansbury, first quarter. Theme of the day would be big play. Stansbury had a lot of them. Hudson Conrad avoids the pile, turns up the sidelines, hits the turbo button, and he is gone. 80 yards for the what? Touchdown. Stallions next drive, Landon Stice. Through the pack, big old stiff arm there. Another one. Stansbury now up 14 nothing. Stansbury again, Greg Manzioni. Okay, this one's only 17 yards, but it still gets in the end zone. Stansbury up big early. Twilla trying to come back now. Jake Brady. Quarterback keeper, that cuts the lead to two touchdowns, but Stansbury with three touchdowns over 60 yards, moving to 4-0 in 3-AA North, tied for first place with Juan Diego. All right, Roy has not been undefeated this late in the season since Jim McMahon ran the offense back in 1975. A win last night over Ogden, coupled with a box elder win, would clinch a playoff spot for the Royals. Royals averaging over 32 points per game, and that average is going to go up after last night's performance. Tyler Skidmore... Going up top, Nate Jones hauls it in, 29-yard touchdown. Royals had eight different players find the end zone last night. Cody Hobbs, he's the only one with more than one. And this thing was over from the opening kick. Roy putting up 70 on Ogden to remain perfect. And with Box Elder beating Bonneville, the Royals clinch a playoff spot last night. Logan and Skyview, winner here, also clinching a playoff spot. And the Bobcats looking to keep pace with Roy in Region 5 as well. Down 13-0, Skyview coming back on the legs of Isaac Herman. Four-yard touchdown, giving the Bobcats a 21-13 lead. 21 straight for Skyview. Looking for more. Garrison Beach to Alex McCray. Nice catch there to keep the drive going. Then it's Herman again. This time, busting through. 31-yard touchdown. Skyview scoring 28 unanswered to beat Logan and clinch a playoff spot in the process. 4A's Region 6 is regarded as one of the most talented and competitive regions in the state. Woods Cross had a chance to sweep Bountiful, East and Highland with a win Friday night, a win that would almost assuredly allow them to win the region. First quarter belonged to the Wildcats, Tomasi Giles. This is a 19-yard touchdown run, one of two touchdowns for the Wildcats. Running back. Let's go to the third quarter. More Woods Cross. Tanner Hammond to Braxton Gunther. That's a 22-yard touchdown, and Woods Cross wins easily to move to 7-0 and 4-0 in region play. The winner of Corner Canyon Skyline would secure a playoff spot as well. Chargers making the statement early. Mike Ebeling, Garrett, Mike Lee, 51 yards, 7 nothing. Corner Canyon. Uh, they would add another big play right before the half. Jake Cahoon, Kabai, 66 yards. Run, Corner Canyon in the playoffs. Still need one more win for a region title. Jordan at West Jordan. And it's all about another state record for this guy right here, Austin Kofensis. Two weeks ago, it was a state rushing record. This week, it was a record for passing yards. Needed 157 yards last night, and he got over 200. Kofensis passing Alex Caressa for the record passing yards. And now will lie the state touchdown record, also held by Caressa. Bead Diggers get the win last night, 48-16. to Region 1 action. Nick Vigil had a huge game in Utah State's win over BYU. His alma mater, Fremont, had a big night against Northridge. First quarter, leading 3-0. Justin Shaw, quarterback, to a diving Hayes Hadley. Hayes! 10-0 Silverwolf. Second quarter, Northridge answers. Ben Jackson airs it out to Drew Perkins. A 40-yard catch and run. 
Fremont led by 11, though, at the half. Let's go to the third quarter. It's Shaw. And then Hadley got some chemistry going. Hadley with three touchdowns total on the night. Fremont with their fourth straight win, setting up a showdown with Weber next week for first place in Region 1. We weren't expecting that at the That's beginning a of the season. Best matchup in 1A right here. Kanab making the six-hour drive to Rich. 3A, 3 nothing Cowboys. Rich looking to take the lead. Joseph Leafson reaches and finds the goal line. Uh, but it does go out of bounds. Didn't get across, so it's a touchback. Kanab then makes Rich pay. Aaron Foster. That's in for the six-yarder. Uh, Cowboys up 9 nothing. Rebels would answer. Coy Brown. Wyatt Muirbrook breaks one tackle and carries another one in. Rich uh, would punch it in 9-7, uh, heading in the fourth quarter. Now two minutes left. Canab needs to kill the clock, but Brandon Southwick breaking free. Gets the first down, but fumbles. Rich players <laughs> scrambling for it, but they recovered out of bounds. Game over. That was enough for Canab to uh, run out the clock. They pull off the upset 9-7 over the Rich Rebels. All right, we still have plenty of highlights to come, but when we come back... You and your brother are just wandering from town to town. Yeah. Asking for shelter and asking for food. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what we did. Yeah, this Utah high school kicker, just lucky to be not only playing football here in Utah, but just to be alive. His story coming up next. Welcome back to Game Night Live, presented by SportsmenUtah.com. Inter-ethnic conflict in the Aturi region of Congo between 1999 and 2003 killed more than 60,000 people and displaced hundreds of thousands from their homes. Roy kicker Ben Ikuli is a victim of that war. This is his amazing story of survival. Ben Ikuli has finally found peace, 8,600 miles away from his war-torn homeland. When they get angry at each other, they just like um, burn houses and just like kill everybody they could see that wasn't their tribe. Ben is from Bunia in the Democratic Republic of Congo. When he was five years old, the war became personal. His home was burned down and his family displaced because of the conflict. That's when we started our forest journey. He and his brother fled hoping to safely reunite with their family. You and your brother are just wandering from town to town. Yeah. Asking for shelter and asking for food. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what we did. We just never stopped going for some reason. We just we were just like going and going. We didn't know where we were going to stop for sure. They did it for three years, walking 160 miles to a city called Arua in Uganda. So that's when we started our refugee life over at the Invebi. We were brought to a little house. It was a little grass house. There were days that we went without anything. So that was mainly what we focused on, was just like, as long as we can sleep here, this is our home, we're good. We registered for that application of um, taking a picture and uh, putting our names in the radio, um, spreading the news to see if they'll find our parents. But. They, they didn't ever find our parents. They lived in a refugee camp for five years before finally getting clearance to come to the United States. We weren't sure where we are going. We are just like, this is another one here. We'll see how far we'll go. Where they went was Utah. Ben is a senior at Roy High School, where his soccer skills he developed at the refugee camp have come in handy. He plays soccer and is a varsity kicker on the football team. It's a really great thing for me with, with everything I've, I've seen and went through. I think um, with the football team and the school, I, I've had the greatest experience. Last year, you had a pretty happy moment. Yeah. Game-winning field goal. Yeah. August 30th, 2013. Roy and Weber are tied at 14 with three seconds left. I, I just started running because I knew what was going on. I, I knew it was going in, so I was, I was really happy. I, it was probably the greatest thing I've, I've done in, um, here in the U.S., for sure. This would be a great place to end the story, but the story gets even better. He received a phone call from his brother on Mother's Day. You can't believe what I just heard. And he said they did find our parents. And I, I, I'm, I said, are you for real? And he's like, yeah, the Red Cross guy just called and said that he found her parents. They came back just a couple months ago to a original home. My brother did connect me with my actual mom. I talked to her. I couldn't hear of much what she was saying because 
I could just hear her crying, that was all. She said they did, they did our funeral um, back home because they never thought we would make it or we, they never thought we made it anywhere. I look back and just say, um, I'm really grateful for that and, and how I'm here and I'm, I'm happy. Ben is making plans for college and also working to become a U.S. citizen, which would allow him to travel back to Congo for that long-awaited reunion with his parents. Rod? Amazing story, Jeremiah. Thank you. Hey, can anybody slow down the Bingham Miners, the number one team in 5A in our KSL coaches poll, has yet to be seriously challenged this season. The defending state champs hosting Alta on Thursday, and the Hawks, well, they were looking for their first win of the season. First quarter, Kyle Gehrig, he was feeling it, going up top to Tyler Topham. That's a 50-yard touch. Nope. Second quarter we go now. More Gehrig. Looking. Nobody there. Now somebody's there. Michael Green. Four touchdowns in the first half for Gehrig. Bingham wins easily 35-3. to three. 4A's number one team, Tim View, can clinch a playoff spot with a win over Spanish Fork. First quarter, Tim View rolling, Britton Covey keeps it himself, refusing to go down. I tell you, I call him the Skeeter Bug, and you can see why. 33 yards, T-Birds with a 14-0 lead. A couple of series later, Spanish Fork back to punt, but Will Watanabe fielding it at the 50. Got a wall, makes a move, and now running fast. In for the touchdown, Tim View up 21-0. And just like most Tim View games this season, it would be Britton Covey again. One more time, Skeeter, bug, two words. He'll break it for 64 yards. Tim View wins this one, 41-7. Prime time performers, brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse. Okie dokie, our first primetime performer, Jordan, quarterback Austin Kofensis, 273 yards passing, becoming the state's all-time leader in passing yards. Three touchdowns through the air as well. Also, 215 rushing yards on 17 carries and another three trips to the end zone. The running back Riley Ogden had a big game for Corner Canyon, the undefeated Chargers, who rushed for 254 yards and two touchdowns and the Chargers win over Skyline. He now has rushed for 1,034 yards on the season. And you watch it last night on KSL.com. Harriman defensive stud Khaleesi Moley, monster game against American Fork. Came in with three sacks on the season. Had four of them last night on Caveman quarterback Tanner Smith. And that is worth a primetime performer for week seven. We still have all the best from week seven to come. Yeah, the projector's all warmed up, ready to roll out the highlight reel. That's next. Week 7 of the high school football season featured overtime drama, an upset, and some spectacular plays. It's time to enjoy it all mixed together to produce this week's highlight reel. of the week brought to you by mr. Mac 
All right, here's how it works. Take a picture of yourself in your best dress outfit. Post it on Twitter or Instagram using hashtag GNL Mr. Max Strutt. You can follow at Mr. Max Suits. Check out what's trending. If we pick you as the best dress, you will win a $50 gift card for Mr. Mac. We have a winner this week, Haley Hunting. Congratulations for your Rich Rebels picture. You win a $50 gift card to Mr. Mac. Haley, congratulations. So All keep right. them coming. We got it. There's some game night spirit for you. Utes, UCLA, tonight at 10. We'll see you then.